we're going to look at analyzing the Nash Singer. So I've got these different vocal sounds um, of soprano singers. My undergrad researchers, X, Y, and Z, um, are going to perform this DFT analysis. They give me their values, and let's go ahead and analyze them. So for X, I can tell here that starting at zero, I have one, two, three, four, five. So my here, my delta F is equal to uh, 0 0.1 hertz. So therefore, my period, which is equal to 1 divided by delta F, is going to be equal to, uh, so for x, uh, alt 4, this is for x, I should do alt 5. So my delta F equals 0 0.1, so my T is equal to 1 divided by delta F. F. I know that there's no mere symmetry here. So my F Nyquist equals 2. I then also know uh, that my uh, F Nyquist should be equal to, so F Nyquist equals 2, actually set equal to N, big N, divided by 2 times delta F. So solve for big N. So that's going to give me this. So my big N equals 40. I also know that my uh, F Nyquist is equal to S of S over 2, so my F sub S equals 2 times F Nyquist, 4, and I should also know that my delta F should be equal to F sub S divided by big N, 1 divided by 10, that should be equal to my delta F. Oops. Delta F, and if I know my delta T is equal to F sub S, 1 over divided by F sub S, so fourth. So F sub S equals 1 over delta T, and that should be the value here. And again, we could look, double check that, that my delta T times my big N should be equal to, again, my period here, which is 10 seconds. Yes, excellent. So everything seems to be matching, um, and we kind of have those values. So we're asked to figure out F sub S, N, delta F, delta T, T, and Nyquist. So that's for X. So I'm going to clear my kernel, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing for y. So all five, y. So for y, again, no mere symmetry. So I know that my, uh, in here I could see that that interval is delta f equals 0 0.2. So that's my value. My t is equal to 1 divided by delta f. I know that my f Nyquist equals 1. I know that my F sub S equals 2 times F Nyquist. And my Q. So that's there. I know then my I could solve for my delta F. So delta F equals my F sub S set equal. F sub S divided by big N. So I could solve for big N. And I could, I don't know why that, did, uh, that's such a, so my big N equals 10. I could just kind of double check that value here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because that's n over 2. Um, so I could double check that my big n divided by 2 times delta f. That should give me my Nyquist frequency. Excellent. And I know that my delta t is equal to 1 divided by f sub s. So 1 half. So hopefully delta f, t, f Nyquist, f sub s, big n, delta t, I think that's all that we're being asked to do for here. Excellent. And then finally, uh, I can look at this, and here I see some mere symmetry. So here I know that my Nyquist frequency is this. So, uh, and this would be basically n times delta f. Uh, so I could kind of solve for a multitude of ways. So I know that in between here, so one, two, three, four, five. So for my z, again, I'm going to quit my kernel. Z, I know now that my delta F, delta F equals 1, so my T is equal to 1 divided by delta F. I know that I could solve for my big N, so solve for 20 is that equal to big N times delta F. F, solve for big N, big N is equal to 20. 
I don't need Mathematica for that, but again, I just like to be safe. Uh, so I can double check. Uh, so now I can look at my F Nyquist is equal to 10 hertz. My F sub S is equal to 2 times F Nyquist. My delta T, delta T is equal to 1 divided by F sub S. So I can double check my period. So my uh, big N times delta T, good. And then now I can also double check that so big N divided by 2 times delta, delta F. That's going to give me my F Nyquist, et cetera, et cetera. And I think I've got all those values again here. Excellent. So uh, there's now, that's how we've kind of solved uh, for that problem. There's a paper that claims Sopranos will exhibit frequencies of this, this, and this. Um, which researcher sampled the signal property? So, uh, no alias aliasing or spectral leakage. Um, explain each graph, whether it'll have aliasing or spectral leakage. So, we know that we need to make sure our F sub S is greater than 32. And we need to make sure also that our delta um, F, the largest delta F that we could have is 0 0.5 to hit all these frequencies. So, let's look back at our sample. Our, so, let's look at S. Our F sub S was 4. That's not going to cut it. So we're going to have signal aliasing, but our delta F is 0 0.1, so we are not going to have really spectral leakage, except we're going to miss some of those samples. Why? My F sub S is 2, not going to cut it again. Um, and my delta, actually, where's my delta F? My delta F as well is 0 0.2, so we're going to miss that 0 0.5 value as well. And finally, for Z, uh, my F sub S is 20, but still not going to cut it. And then my delta F, or my delta F is just one. So that's an issue. Uh, so I'm going to have special. So none of them are going to work. And again, that is definitely bound to happen on some of these problems as well. So that's it. That's all problem three. So again, I would definitely start with problem three and problem four and go through those and then go back and do all those calculations in one and two. All right. I'll see you on the last problem. Thanks. Bye.